What's going on? Welcome to Blockchain Tech and Finance News with me, your host, Katoshi. If you're on the YouTube side, please do subscribe, turn on the bell notifications right here, right to Blockchain Tech and Finance News. Uh, we got a slew of different articles, a lot pertaining to Bitcoin and some heaviness on Ethereum as well for what's going on in upgrades and forks and whatnot. Let's go right on into the new uh, US market data. What's going on? Check the stream, make sure the monitor is working. Are we live? We are live. There we go. Check the audio. All right, everything's working cool. We got the Dow Jones Industrial Average up 0.6%, uh, almost 0.7%. NASDAQ Composite Index up 1.21%. Uh, S&P 500 up 0.98%. Global Dow Real Time up 1.04%. Gold Continuous Contract is down 0.3%. Crude Oil is up 1.35%. In the Europe market data, FTSE 100 up 1.04%, DAX up 1.16%, CSE 40 up 1.43%, FTSE MIB up 1.4%, IBEX 35 up 1.33%, Stock 600 up 1.24%. In the Asia market, the Asia Dow up 1.07%, Nikkei 225 up 1.33%. 1, 1. Hang Seng up 2.06%. Uh, Shanghai Composite Index down 0.16%. S&P, BSE, Sensex is down, uh, sorry, up 0.6%. FTSE Straits Times Index up 0.22%. S&P uh, 200 benchmark is up 0.23%. Cosby Index is down, uh, sorry, is uh, up 0.37%. On the currencies market, Euro down 0.08%. Uh, Japanese Yen up 1.07%, British pound down 0.15%, Australia dollar down 0.19%, that's US dollar index uh, up 0.22%, WSJ dollar index up 0.28%. On the cryptocurrency market, we have Bitcoin up 3.79%, uh, 28,364 dollar USD per BTC, Ethereum is $1,800.47 per ETH, up 1.46%. In the rates market, US Treasury, treasury 10 uh, ten year is up 0.001 point uh germany you uh 10 year government bond up 0.017 italy 10 year government bond is up 0.003 spain 10 year government bond is down 0.011 uk 10 year guild is down 0.005 japan 10 year government bond is down 0.008 point futures We've got, yeah, oil up 1.2%, gold continuous down 0.21%, e, e, uh, e mini NASDAQ 100 is up 1.16%, e mini Dow continuous contract is up 0.59%, e mini S&P 500 futures is up 0.91%, and silver continuous futures is up 0.3%. On the first article, well, I mean, yeah, we got, um, obviously, check it, check it, right, to say gold. down two dollars and seventy cents per ounce down one point uh down point four percent or one four percent sorry from coin desk over here to copy and paste right. coin desk bitcoin heads for the best quarter in two years outperforms ether gold and nasdaq one observer said poor order book depth is primarily responsible for the rally, while others pointed to the cryptocurrency's social money appeal and Fed pivot specul speculation as bigger catalysts. Uh, so Bitcoin BTC has begun 2023 with a bang, marking a uh, positive turnaround from a year-long swoon. The leading cryptocurrency by market value had has added almost 72% to 28500 uh, this year, its best quarterly gain in two years, Coindesk data show. The price rally has lifted the cryptocurrency's market value to $542 billion. Just three months ago, some experts were mulling the possibility of Bitcoin falling as low as 12000 this quarter after its valuation has declined by 76% uh, November 2021. The rebound has put Bitcoin ahead of Ether, the second largest cryptocurrency by market value, which appears to on track for a 50% quarterly gain. Gold has added over 70%, while Wall Street's tech-heavy index uh, Nasdaq has rallied 15%. Much of the rebound has been fueled by speculation that central banks led by the Federal Reserve, uh, Fed, will abandon their aggressive rates increased in response to recession signals. 
The so-called Fed pivot expectations uh, strengthened early this month after three U.S. banks collapsed and the central bank launched emergency funding programs to attest a rest panic in the banking sector. The central bank's balance sheet has recently expanded by $300 billion, undoing months of quantitative tightening. According to fund, Fed funds futures, traders now see the Fed beginning to ease cycle in June with a 25 basis point rate cut. It's all about expectations of new easing measures by central banks, especially the Fed, Martin Weber, digital assets product strategist at Market Vector Indexes, told Coindesk TV. Among all risk assets, Bitcoin stands out as being the most sensitive to liquidity swings. David Foley, managing uh, partner at Bitcoin Opportunity Fund, said, assets with sound money appeal like Bitcoin and gold and benefiting from the liquidity injections. And with the Fed suddenly turning on a dime, having to throw some Q&E back into the system, to protect the banking system, money flows into sound money assets, gold, silver, and Bitcoin being sound money is going to be the fastest in the race, Foley said on Coindesk TV, referring to quantitative easing. Now, some observers said Bitcoin's worsening order book depth was played, uh, pl has played a bigger role in the price surge. Order book depth refers to how easy or difficult it is to get in and out of large traders at stable prices. The depth has easily, easy, uh, steadily dwindled since the collapse of FTX and reached a 10-month low earlier this month. In other words, a small buy order now has a bigger bullish impact on prices. In this instance, the narrative of Bitcoin has a hedge against financial calamity against uh, or calamity gave BTC the push it needed, but there was little ups, uh, upside resistance to hurdle over Connor Ryder, an analyst at Paris-based crypto data provider Kaiko, told, uh, wrote in a recently published analytics piece. Will Bitcoin keep minting more millionaires, or is this just a dead cat bounce? Here's why Warren Buffett believes crypto will become a very will come to a very bad ending. So this is from Yahoo Finance from Ethan Rothberg. Uh, let's see, are you a fan of uh, roller coaster? We have got an investment for you, uh, Bitcoin uh, for Bitcoin. Uh, don't miss. I guess uh, you could be the landlord of Walmart. UBS says 61% millionaire collectors allocate up to 30% of their overall portfolio to this exclusive. Uh, this is just some overall. Uh, what am I talking about? Uh, thrill seekers are, and earnest crypto fans have spent the last few years watching the alternative investment rise and fall, sometimes with exhilaration and sometimes uh, with that sinking stomach feeling. After hitting an all time peak of around 69,000 per unit on November 10th, 2021, the world's leading digital currency has. Uh, sin, uh, since erased roughly 60% 6, of its value, so, uh, sitting at about 26800 right now. It's at 28000 You're just looking at it. To be sure, Bitcoin has rallied once again over the last uh, several weeks, up nearly 62% so far in 2023. But what could the world's most famous investors uh, uh, say to those who might be thinking of buying Bitcoin right now? If you owned all of the Bitcoin in the world and you offered it to me for $25, I wouldn't take it. Warren Buffett said, uh, he told CNBC earlier this year. Other than Bitcoin's disappointing track record, here are some, uh, three more reasons Buffett won't go near it. It has no unique value at all. The billionaire investor doesn't like Bitcoin because he considers it an unproductive asset. Warren Buffett has a well-known preference of stock corporations whose value and cash flow come from producing things, but cryptocurrencies don't have real value, Buffett said in a CNBC interview in 2020. They don't uh, reproduce. They, don't, they can't mail you a check. They can't do anything. And what you hope is that somebody comes along and pays you more money for them later on, but then that goes, uh, but that's the, per, uh, the person's, but then that person's got the problem. Uh, though Bitcoin, um, you know, I just have to iterate, like, you know, or they have access to something, not a problem, but to all sorts of like, you know, things going on within the ecosystem that is token gated. Uh, we were just talking about this, like token gating ticket tickets uh, with, you know, blockchain tokens. That's basically the, the cryptocurrency to enter into a concerts. That's a utility. Probably pay for those things with Bitcoin. Um, anyways, though Bitcoin is intended to provide real value as a payment system, that use is still pretty limited. As Buffett sees it, Bitcoin's uh, value comes from the optimism that someone else will be willing to pay more for it in the future than you're paying today. Uh, he doesn't think crypto counts as money. Buffett has made his share of his share of extremely cutting uh, remarks about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency over the years. 
I don't have any Bitcoin. I don't have any cryptocurrency. Never will. Uh, he told CNBC back in 2000, 2020. Uh, as a tradable asset, Bitcoin boomed, but doesn't meet the criteria of money. According to the most common definition, money is supposed to be a means of exchange of sort of value in a unit of a, uh, account. So, um, rich young Americans have lost confidence in the stock market and are betting these three assets instead. Uh, whatever that is. Uh, not that's more like... Sorry, I'm going to uh, ignore these read more things, but I said like read more and then continue. But anyways, uh, but, but, uh, but Buffett calls it a mirage. It does not meet our test of currency. The billionaire said in CNBC in 2014, it's not a durable means of exchange. It's not a store of value. He adds that it is a very effective way of anonymously transmitting money. But a check is a way of transmitting money too. He said, are checks worth a whole lot of money just because they can transmit money? He doesn't understand it. Uh, he doesn't understand, yeah, that uh, basically... Uh, isn't, I mean, I just kind of gave an example, so I mean, I guess you can understand it or not. Uh, but he doesn't understand it, he doesn't understand it, whatever points are the points are. Um, personal reasons, I guess. I don't know, not industry reasons, could be industry reasons, but that's like everything. Billionaire investor follows the value of investing strategy, which focuses on buying undervalued stocks and strong companies and holding them for a long time. Simple, right? Berkshire Hathaway looks for companies with a, prof a good profit margin and those that produce unique products that can't easily be substituted. As Warren Buffett once said in a letter to his shareholders, it's far better to buy a wonderful company at a share, uh, fair price than a fair company at a wonderful price. Um, but Buffett's distaste for crypto stocks doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't buy Bitcoin. Even the billionaire has come around on sectors he previously spoke out against and notoriously avoided tech stocks even at the height of the dot-com bubble, and now his company's largest holding is Apple. Alternative uh, investments, with inflation still sitting at a steep 6.4%, many investors these days are aiming to fight inflation outside of the volatile stock market, but if Buffett's wearing, uh, wariness has put you off of crypto, yet you're still keen to dip into investments that outside of traditional stocks, you have options. Historically, uh, alternative investments have been the pure, pure, view, uh, pure view of institutional investors and ultra-high net worth individuals, but new platforms are demystifying niche markets and making it easier to ch and cheaper to buy in, especially for non-accredited investors. These platforms give retail investors access to a range of private market investments, typically have a low correlation in the, uh, to the stock market, with some requiring a minimum investment of just $500. Uh, these include luxury vehicle finance, commercial uh, real estate, fine art, and even legal finance. Uh, so, yeah, some things like that. Will Bitcoin keep minting more millionaires, or is it just a dead cat bounce? Here's why Warren Buffett believes crypto will come to a very bad ending. But um, I mean, it could be really be in a dead cat bounce right now. Yeah, most definitely Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Possibly. Let's see, it's twenty eight thousand, but is that just um, a bounce? Something else. Eh. Uh, analysts who predicted twenty twenty two crypto collapse could turn mega bullish if Bitcoin hits twelve k. This is from Mahab Qureshi. From Benzinga, a sedan honest an analyst who has put uh, who has earlier predicted a collapse in the crypto market for 2022 has now signaled that Bitcoin um, poised to go to on a bearish trend. What happened? Uh, the pseudonymous pseudonymous uh, analyst known as Capo of Crypto on Wednesday took to Twitter to issue a warning to his 734,000 followers that BTC was on the brink of capitula uh, capitulation, which Looks like he misspelled capitulation. Uh, Capo shared a chart that suggests BTC is likely to fall to, uh, from the same price, current price range of 28,000 to 12,000 with a floor of 11,227. Uh, Capo shared that he could turn mega bullish if Bitcoin's price reached his target or the analyst was invalidated. Or in the, uh, sorry, the analysis was invalidated. Uh, the analyst on Monday divulged that his primary uh, short positions were in Binance coin and Tron, adding that he had had other shorts for AAV and Solana. Price prediction at the time of writing BTC was trading at 28085 up 4.19% in the last 24 hours. And let's see, what else? Um, something about... Yeah, that's something that's going on to a different article. I don't know if it's Zynga, but that's right there. Um, so we will have to see. I... I I'd say a 15 or 10k uh, Bitcoin wouldn't surprise me. This is not. It's not here. Let's 
see. News, NFTs. And I had a piece of news here, but maybe it's gone. It was seemingly like, um, is it time to buy JPEGs? Can you respond to the upcoming Ethereum withdrawals uh, for the new Ethereum, Ethereum NFT news? NFTs incorporate NFTs in the unstaking process. Yeah, this is it right here. Ethereum staking provider Lido to incorporate NFTs into the staking process. Users will receive a transferable non-fungible token representing their request withdrawal for their staked Ether. Uh, this is from Sage D. Young, Coindesk. Lido, the largest decentralized finance DeFi protocol, be, uh, by total value locked unveiled plans during its node operate during its uh, node operator community call number five to release a non-fungible token NFT representing a user's withdrawal request amount as part of the process of unstaking their Ether ETH. These withdrawals will be enabled after the Ethereum blockchain undergoes its next major upgrade, Shanghai, also referred to as Chappella by developers next month. Ether withdrawals on Lido, where users can unstake their ETH in, um, staked ETH and receive ETH as a one-to-one -one ratio. We will have two steps, request and claim, according to Maria Muziuko. Uh, Product manager at Lido during the call Tuesday afternoon. Once a user requests at with uh, at withdrawal, they will receive a Lido issued NFT representing their withdrawal request. The user can then use the NFT to claim their ETH rewards. The NFT is burned after the user redeems and claims their ETH. Uh, Lido was the first uh, to provide access to liquidity to ETH holders who wanted to stake their tokens by issuing a derivative token, uh, ST ETH. And this token represents the combined value of the user's initial deposit plus accrued interest that can be used across many DeFi platforms. The introduction of an NFT into the request withdrawal process re represents another first of its kind. So um, it must like compound automatically within itself or something. I don't know. Each withdrawal request NFT will be transferable, which means uh, users can transfer uh, the NFT to another address, giving this new address the right to claim the corresponding Ether rewards. If a user decides to sell their NFT on secondary markets, Lido said it will not take a, a royalty percentage from the sale. Uh, withdrawal, pe withdrawal periods will take uh, roughly one to five days to process, depending on the amount of uh, ST ETH in, one, in the withdrawal and the number of total requests according to the community call. Um, so that's their uh, Ethereum staking provider, Lido, to incorporate NFTs into unstaking process. Um, let's go on to next piece of reading. Uh, yeah. More NFT news serving up. Square Enix unveils controversial Final Fantasy VII NFTs from GameRant.com. Uh, Pam K. Ferdinand, writer, reporter for Game uh, Rant. Uh, Final Fantasy NFTs that were teased in 2022 are finally unveiled by Square Enix, confirming the company's dedication to blockchain tech. Uh, Square Enix has finally revealed that uh, the Final Fantasy VII NFTs that were teased nearly a year ago as other video game companies in 2022 began to back down from plans to integrate NFTs from their intellectual properties. The Japanese publisher and developer stood firm. Square Enix president Yosuke, Yosuke uh, Matsuda released a letter to Ring in New Year 2022 and expressed a commitment uh, to blockchain technology. And one of the first IPs to get the NFT treatment would be Final Fantasy VII. Uh, as Final Fantasy fans begged Square Enix to reconsider its NFT plans, the company's stock jumped by, in price by 8% soon after Matsuda's letter was published. The goal of introducing NFTs into Square Enix ecosystem, the company's president claimed, was to make gaming more exciting and to entice people who otherwise had no incentive to play traditional games. Uh, Square Enix had now revealed the Final Fantasy VII Anniversary Art Museum Digital Card Plus, a uh, wordy title for a collection of digital and physical trading cards based on the extremely popular RPG which celebrated its 25th anniversary in 2022. There will be 207 different cards, comprised of 100 normal cards, their premium version foil duplicates, there are three additional cards that have not yet been revealed. The trading cards will feature art, visuals, and famous scenes from Final Fantasy VII since its release in 1997. 
um, the items will be sold in packs of six physical cards and one collected NFT digital card with a tag price of roughly $3 USD each. A box containing 20 physical card packs can also currently be pre-ordered for $79.80 from Square Enix's North American Shore. The release date for those Final Fantasy trading cards is listed on the Japanese language website uh, as March 31st, 2023. The site also clarifies that the digital cards can be enjoyed at the any time on your smartphone uh, smartphone or PC, and a special website has already gone live where users can trade or view their NFTs. Uh, the additional, I don't know what chain, I haven't heard, is it on Ethereum? Maybe I missed that, maybe I don't really know. Um, hmm. $3 each. Uh, anyways, in addition to finally revealing the Final Fantasy VII digital trading cards, Square Enix also recently offered a first look at its upcoming NFT-based game, um, Symbiogenesis, in November 2022, when it was discovered that the company had trademarked the word Symbiogenesis, many fans expressed hope that the announcement for a Parasite Eve remaster would soon follow. Instead, it turned out to be this title of a full-fledged RPG built around blockchain technology that will feature 10,000 collectible NFTs. Um, so yeah, I'm going to definitely look into Symbiogenesis um, right there. It seems like we got a link right here anyways. Um, so I'll, I'll read about that uh, tomorrow. Let's see. It is curious that Square Enix seems to be fully set on its path to introduce NFTs into new games and establish IPs, while a few, a few companies still show some interest in the tech, with recent rumors even uh, claiming that Sony plans to rent NFTs to players and stream audiences. Uh, the fervor seems to have died down greatly since 2021-2022. Companies that were previously all-in, like Ubisoft, have since become less vocal about their NFT intentions, while others like Mojang have denounced them outright. Uh, yeah, so but they, uh, the Final Fantasy is uh, available on PC, PS4, and PS5. Uh, there's other, so other Final Fantasies on uh, Xbox and Microsoft platforms and for PC that are fun. Um, some of the OG ones like uh, Fantasy 12, I believe, or whatever. Um, ones are really cool. All right, I'll save that article. We'll talk about that more. Because bridging gaming with blockchain uh, from AAA gaming is... Uh, so that makes sense done in the right way fortnite as the hub for the uh, future metaverse nft culture.com epics open standards reference so we're going to go into uh, some metaverse news right out of nft news epics open store standards revolutionizing culture social and community as a thought leader in the nft space and analyst and a passionate gamer i have witnessed firsthand the rapid uh does it say who's oh natalie read a reporter for nft culture okay i have witnessed firsthand the rapid evolution of the digital landscape the concept of the metaverse has been a topic of growing interest as it promises to reshape the way we interact with technology and each other at the center of this paradigm shift Fortnite and Unreal Engine were poised to play a pivotal role in shaping the metaverse, transforming it from a science fiction concept to a tangible reality. Uh, the metaverse can be described as a persistent, interconnected virtual universe that combines aspects of social media, online gaming, and augmented reality. It pr uh, pr uh, promises to revolutionize how we communicate, work, and interact with one another by seamlessly uh, merging our digital and physical experiences as the developers behind Fortnite, one of the most popular games of our time, Epic Games has a unique opportunity, opportunity to harness the power of their game engine, Unreal Engine, to create the foundations of this digital frontier. In this essay, uh, I will argue that Fortnite's integration of Unreal editor capabilities and its extension beyond Battle Royale alongside the development of other side positions it as the central hub for future metaverse uh, for the future metaverse. This transformation will revolutionize culture, social and community interactions by providing an open collaborative platform that fosters innovation and empowers users to reshape the future of the digital uh, world. Fortnite's transformation from a game to a metaverse hub. Fortnite has come a long way since its inception as a battle royale game. Over the years, it has evolved into a platform that has captured the attention of millions of players worldwide. This metamorphosis can be created, uh, credited to Epic Games' vision for Fortnite as more than just a game, but rather than it, uh, as an integral part of the metaverse. Overview of Fortnite's value, uh, evolution, uh, Origins as a battle royale game launched in 2017. Fortnite initially gained traction due to its engaging and competitive battle royale gameplay. Players are captivated by the unique combination of building and shooting mechanics, leading to a rapid increase in its player base and expansion into creative modes and virtual events as Fortnite's popularity grew. Uh, for Epic Games expanded the game's scope by introducing creative mode, uh, creative mode allowing players to design their own maps, game modes, and experiences. This transformative, uh, transformative addition facilitated the game's uh, transition towards a more versatile 
platform. Furthermore, Fortnite began hosting virtual events such as concerts, movie premieres, and interactive experiences, solidifying its role as a space for social interaction and entertainment and, and entertainment beyond traditional gameplay, uh, integration of Unreal Editor capabilities, empowering users to create their own content. By incorporating Unreal Engine's powerful editing tools into Fortnite, Epic Games has given players the ability to create and share their own content, ranging from simple structures to complex interaction, interactive experiences. This user-generated content has fostered a thriving creative community within the game, paving the way for the development of a more immersive and interconnected metaverse, uh, so facilitating the gr uh, growth of an interactive user-driven uh, metaverse. Man, this article goes on. This is uh, this is long. I, I might I might kind of skip through here, but yeah. Uh, so they got yeah, I got facilitating the uh, growth of interactive user driven metaverse um, as they uh, Fortnite continues to evolve. Integration of Unreal Editor capabilities allows for seamless transition from uh, a battle royale game into a metaverse hub. Players can now create and explore virtual worlds, attend events, and socialize with others in a uh, shared digital space. This shift towards a more interactive and user-driven experience establishes Fortnite as a cornerstone for the future metaverse, offering limitless potential for innovation and growth. And Unreal's open standards and their impact on the future metaverse, as Fortnite positions itself as a hub for the future metaverse, it is crucial to acknowledge the role of Unreal Engine's open standards in facilitating the transformation. These open standards are vital for ensuring interoperability between platforms and fostering a collaborative, innovative environment. The development of, open, uh, of an open set of standards ensuring interoperability between platforms. Unreal Engine's uh, commitment to developing an open set of standards is critical to the success of the uh, metaverse. By enabling seamless integration and interaction between different platforms and applications, users can navigate the metaverse without barriers, creating a more cohesive digital world. This interoperability fosters collaboration and enhances the overall user experience, positioning the metaverse as an accessible and inclusive space for all. Uh, promoting innovation and collaboration, open standards empower developers and creators to build upon existing technologies, leading to a wealth of innovation, uh, innovative experiences within the metaverse. By providing a framework of collaboration, Unreal Engine encourages the exchange of ideas and the development of groundbreaking new projects. The system, uh, the e this ecosystem, of creativity is essentially is essential for the growth and evolution of the metaverse, ensuring that it remains a dynamic, ever-expanding universe. So yeah, they got Unreal Engine's influence in other metaverse projects like Board Ape Yacht Club. Uh, I was noting that yesterday. Uh, experiences for the new uh, Other Side Deed, uh, alignment with interoperable uh, M2 for scalable, persistent online worlds. So Unreal's engine partnership with interoperable, uh, uh, sorry, improper, improbable. M2, a company focused on building scalable and persistent online worlds, uh, further showcases its commitment to creating a comprehensive metaverse experience by working closely with cutting-edge technology providers like in prop, uh, Improbable M2. Unreal Engine ensures the metaverse can accommodate a growing number of users and experiences without sacrificing stability and performance. So Tim Sweeney's vision for the metaverse, uh, also his position on it, Epic, the CEO of Epic Games and driving force behind Fortnite and Unreal Engine, Tim Sweeney, has been instrumental in shaping, shaping the future of metaverse. His vision expressed during his last state of Unreal event offers valuable insight into the direction and potential of his emerging digital landscape. Uh, you can watch that there, this video right there. Again, I have all these articles in the description box below on these videos. And throw your comments in the uh, description, see what um, you know news you'd like to see here, featured here and what's important that you think uh, is noteworthy to... Uh, transcribe from or, or read from. Transcribe digital videos from. Anyways, uh, overview of information. Their overview of the latest state of Unreal uh, event. Yeah, it talks about that a bit. You know, things probably obviously things about metaverse and stuff. Analysis of Sweeney's com uh, comments on the metaverse. Uh, vague hints at Fortnite's role in the metaverse. Um, you know, collaboration suggests that Fortnite will continue to evolve and contribute to the growth of the metaverse in significant ways. An emphasis on collaboration and user empowerment. Uh, definitely, you know, this vision uh, for, you know, giving users the tools and opportunities to shape their digital experiences. Uh, Sweeney believes that Metaverse can become an inclusive, dynamic space that fosters creativity and connection. The vision aligns with the ongoing integration of Unreal Editor's capabilities into Fortnite and the focus on user-generated content and key uh, drivers of the game's transformation uh, into a Metaverse hub. The future of culture, social, and community in the Metaverse, uh, the emergence of the Metaverse with Fortnite at its, at it, at its core, will have a profound impact on various aspects of our lives, including culture, social interactions, and community building by providing a platform for unique experiences and connections. The metaverse promises to reshape the way we engage with one another in a digital world. The merging of digital and physical experiences, so virtual contents of uh, events and experiences, uh, real world applications and impact, social and community building opportunities, uh, cross-platform interactions and shared experiences, 
the uh, formation of new communities and social structures, obviously privacy and security concerns, a potential for increased digital dependence, uh, competition with other metaverse platforms. So, and then there's a conclusionary uh, aspect here. So, you know, uh, on the privacy and security concerns, you know, uh, you know, shared privacy, uh, personal information, you know, this is basically like Web5, uh, basically it's like you're all things are connected to your wallet, uh, digital ledger of a blockchain, and it could be interconnected to playing Fortnite Web5. Just saying, developers and platform operators will need to implement robust security measures to adhere to strict privacy guidelines and safeguard user information. I mean, user information can be rolled up, like I'm saying, like we were just talking about. Uh, I'll talk about Web5 more. Because people keep going, well, there's Web2 and Web3. Web2 is like, you know, the Google search engine, um, evolution, and email. Netflix online, Web2 experience, Web3 is rolled up with NFTs. Now we're rolling up NFTs with, um, you know, crypto, Web3, cryptocurrency wallets, uh, heavily controlled by VCs and not so decentralized as you might think, but in any regards, uh, through centralized companies providing services and products like Jas Dor Dorsey, Dorsey is talking about but allowing through central company builds the decentralized nature of how we transact. So having Web3 decentralization with Web2 uh, UX interfaces and UIs and interactions all rolled up together. Two plus three is the five. Skip the four. Uh, there's no Web4. It's just the Web5. It's the Web2 and the Web3 added together and rolled up into Web5. As I said, um, I know it wouldn't be surprising that it's interacting with games like um, Sony games and Fortnite games and PC games and whatever, whatever chain or maybe even multiple chains. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe their own chains, own wallets. We'll see what Jack Dorsey's building upon it, though. Maybe something to do with Bitcoin. I don't know. The Lightning Network. Elon Musk bids farewell to the metaverse. The CEO of Tesla compared what was presented as the next big thing in a next big thing in a tech a year ago to a disease that has infected the world. Uh, this is from Luke Olinga, 13 hours ago, writer reporter for the street.com. The metaverse is no more. It seems to be a message sent by big companies. A little over a year ago, the technology was presented as the next big, uh, next big thing. Each company, whatever its sector of activity felt like it, it was imperative to talk about metaverse and its related subjects. Uh, CEOs felt like they were being judged by how often they uttered the word metaverse, the metaverse to put it simply, as a virtual alternative world in which we interact via avatars using tech objects like headsets and goggles, the idea was to build virtual and augmented technology. The concept resonated hugely during the pandemic as the whole world was on lockdown and people were looking for an escape. But for Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of social media giant Meta Platforms, parent company of Facebook and Instagram, the metaverse was the new technological revolution, a kind of new frontier on October 21st. Zuckerberg just uh, described a utopian future in which people would live immersive digital experiences. Uh, Zuckerberg buries the metaverse. The metaverse was all the more on the rise as it integrated cryptocurrencies and non-fungible tokens, NFTs, and other crypto-related products. As a result, it rode the crypto mania, which allowed its proponents to avoid to answer the question of what was on the economic model for companies. Basically, how do uh, how do companies intend to make money with the metaverse, and also. Uh, what were the use cases of it in our daily lives? It appears the metaverse will probably not answer these questions as it now has been ousted by artificial intelligence AI, which is considered a real paradigm shift in the tech world. AI has seen a technological revolution in the same magnitude, if not superior to the internet. AI opens a new era dominate, dominated by robots in our daily lives. The transformation of our daily lives by AI has been popularized by the controversial, uh, the conversational chatbot uh, chat GBT, uh, which completely revolutionized um, uh, this is the internet search. Uh, this caused a golden race between tech firms and startups. Zuckerberg was a staunch proponent of the metaverse, resolved to kill the metaverse by making AI his company's priority. Um, we're creating a new top level product group at Meta, focused on generative AI to turbocharge our work in this area, Zuckerberg said in a February 27th post on Facebook. And no doubt they will probably. Uh, we're starting to, by pulling together a lot of teams working on generative AI across the company into one group focused on building delightful experiences around this technology. Uh, Musk celebrates the metaverse's demise. While Zuckerberg killed the, and buried the metaverse, Elon Musk, who never believed in this concept, was just 
has just bid farewell to it. The serial entrepreneur has just compared the metaverse to a digital a disease that infected the world. He believes that the world has just overcome the disease and is still in the process of recovering it from it. A tech mogul celebrated the metaverse's funeral uh, following news that Disney had decided to drastically cut costs on the metaverse division. According to the Wall Street Journal, Disney is eliminating its metaverse division that once has uh, was seen as developing a new form of storytelling. All the divisions, roughly 50 members, have lost their jobs. Uh, must use the opportunity to finally turn to the page in the metaverse. Nature is healing, he said about the Wall Street Journal report. Uh, Twitter users shared his opinion on the metaverse and recalled the meta and Disney. Its companies have spent billions on this concept. Good competition between Facebook and Twitter as to who has been has wasted the most money commented uh, one Twitter user. Uh, makes sense you don't need 50 employees to create a metaverse. You just need uh, the correct AI and it'll generate uh, you a way better metaverse, said one user. Hmm. People will still prefer real life, added one user. Yeah. Yeah. There is always that aspect. Yep. Let's keep going. Forbes from Digital Tech. Uh, the metaverse. Um, it's not what it's done. What is this also? Uh, what? Special to the metaverse today is path to the future. Oh, I got a double paste in there. The Industrial Digital Twin Metaverse of Today and its Path to the Future. Uh, it's from Stephen Carlini, Vice President of Innovation of Data Center Energy Management Business Unit and Schneider Electric, uh, Forbes Council member. So, uh, Forbes Techno uh, Technology Council. Many purists insist. Um, yeah, it's not too Yeah, it's cool. Many purists, uh, may, many people, wait, sorry, many purists insist that only, that insist the only genuine. The only genuine um, metaverse is the, is the one that requires you to immerse your lifelike alternative self, not your cartoon like avatar, um, in, a, you know, in a world where you can conduct, um, I don't even think this is, no, 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 something else. Anyways, they're building an NFT marketplace, I'll say. Maybe they'll do metaverse stuff, Amazon. You can conduct life as your computer generator self. This uh, simulacrum was uh, telegraphed in 1983's movie War Games, where the distinction between reality and computer-generated simulated reality became blur becomes blurred. Is this a game or is this real? When people predict the metaverse is 10 years away, they're talking about a metaverse that requires headsets and wearables to go through multiple generations of evolution, extensive modeling and programming in the of the alternative world and data centers and artworks, uh, ne sorry, networks to be put in place to produce the capacity and load latency required. Given the delay, it seems fashionable perhaps to put the idea of the metaverse away and wait for a decade, but not so fast. I contended uh, the immersive, uh, immersive, alternative, lifelike world metaverse is only one of the three types of metaverses. Each of its uh, one, each one has its own maturity and development path. Uh, so we got the personal metaverse, an individual's immersive experience using VR for playing games, attending concerts and museums, spending cryptocurrency, etc. We got the enterprise metaverse, mixed reality experiences using AR, VR, XR for work, for participating in meetings and operating or mainstream, uh, maintaining business environments. And we got the industrial metaverse, leveraging digital twin technology to replicate industrial or manufacturing operations, systems, or processes. Uh, industrial metaverse is one I talk about because it has a maturity level that will still uh, that while still early is closer to its end vision than the personal or enterprise metaverse. Companies are leveraging digital twins today that will act as the foundation of tomorrow's universal, uh, sorry, uh, tomorrow's industrial metaverse. An AVEVA study uh, found 85% of industrial businesses plan to increase their digital investment. And the uh, latest analysis by Emergent Research predicts that the global digital twin market is expected to reach uh, 106.26 billion by 2028 in a robust revenue CAGR, CAGR, yeah, of 54.7%. Uh, I have to research that more. But how the industrial metaverse adds value. Uh, digital, uh, design engineers use digital twin technology to run simulations and optimize the 
design around specified parameter, uh, parameters like efficiency, output, reliability, and even sustainability. Value doesn't stop here, as after the design is constructed in the physical world, live data can be fed into the models and operations can be optimized further. This technology is only as good as the data. Having harmonized and verified live data as a, is important as well as reliable data acquisition. Digital collection eliminates concerns about accuracy and depending on a manual uh, entry. Uh, uh, entry. How the industrial metaverse is built today, high capacity compute uh, resources, computing resources are required as the industrial digital twin metaverse is a computationally heavy endeavor. Detailed photorealistic and uh, physically accurate depictions of or emulations of environments need to be created. Imagine the complexity of environments like a million square foot warehouse, a semiconductor manufacturing plant or an entire rail system. S uh, serious computational power is necessary. Servers with 40 GPUs and 60 terabyte of flash storage on IT racks and rows of pods is uh, in purpose. Built data centers. The power density of these servers can far surpass 50 to 20 kilowatt per rack. The uh, limit of data center cooling. This is a uh, driving more interest in liquid cooling to the server and even the chip. Another building block is transformers. Even our deep learning models designed for large data sets in tasks like uh, natural language processing used in digital twin modeling. Most companies won't endeavor in, to construct their own data center to model complex digital twins. They'll out, uh, outsource to cloud platforms like GPU architecture and transformers, integrating integrated into their offerings like companies like Amazon uh, Web Services, Gla uh, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, Alibaba, Baidu, Tencent Cloud, for example. The future of the value of the industrial metaverse, uh, digital twins will likely expand into uh, smaller instances and become ubiquitous and connected. In theory, every asset or process can be uh, digitally twinned, connecting everything in a company. The benefit would be uh, that almost every process could happen digitally and countless numbers of digital twins could be interoperable. These mass simulations uh, would drive enterprise level benefits as opposed to system or process level benefits. Theoretically, uh, these would extend, extend to city, country, and even global level benefits. And so building the industrial metaverse in the future, uh, benefits at these levels will require a lot of computer uh, processing and not just in single digital twin data center, they will need a fleet of connected local edge digital twin data centers. Uh, it goes on to, you know, um, a bit going over, you know, uh, evolving from a digital twin uh, to wide digital twins. This involves focusing on a core system, expanding, integrating smaller ones, uh, utility grids, uh, where power plant could be designed to power a large town, digital twin of the, plant, uh, of the plant, distribution system could be built and optimized to minimize waste and inefficiencies, so operating real-time data could be used to refine operation. Uh, introduce new renewable supply in the form of microgrid with wind power, solar power, and utility scaling battery storage. The digital twin would be made for the new local uh, instance microgrid with a uh, local edge data center that could operate and control the local digital. So this is talking about like basically like physical environments of infrastructure that support like vast, large um, metaverse environments. Production grade, industrial grade. Eventually, the large uh, town industrial twin would be processing big amounts of life. And basically what this is, is like, you know, like having robots that function uh, from someone who is in the metaverse of a grid of a, a physical space to a metaverse space. And the robots function the jobs and the person is just sitting there going like that, 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 that in a seat and the robot does its work. Not so far fetched. Uh, Boston Dynamics already has robots that like move around and do all sorts of stuff. All you have to do is just pair that with a metaverse and, you know, kind of AI, deep machine learning and whatnot to form, form functions with human uh, um, interactions and metaverse spaces. Eventually, large town industrial twin would be processing big amounts of live local data to make or automate decisions and improve performances across the entire system. Maintaining these grids will be an enormous challenge. The digital twins using photo uh, grammatry to generate 3D representations of equipment used in generative transmission and distribu uh, distribution equipment to evaluate where and performance can still be connected through 5G, 6G, or even 7G in the future. Uh, organizations in all industries are under pressure to deliver improved innovative operating models or decision-making processes. Now companies can turn to digital twin technology for individual industrial manufacturing operations and systems. In the future, we can expect enterprise-wide and country-wide digital twin models with interoperable digital twins, although it will take time for the, uh, v this vision to fully materialize, iterating, solving, and adding twins is a major is a journey that we uh, is well underway. Yeah, so it's from Forbes uh, Energy Technology Council, uh, in an invitation-only community uh, for world-class CIO, CTOs, and technology executives.
So I guess you can click there if you're how you qualify if you're interested if you fit that criteria. But yeah, digital uh twin metaverse of today and its path to the future. We're gonna be closing out the stream. New articles here. What's left? BBC AI could replace equivalent of 300 million jobs in a report by Chris Valance. Artificial intelligence AI could replace the equivalent of 300 million full-time jobs. A report by investment bank Goldman Sachs says it could replace a quarter of work tasks in the U.S. and Europe, but may also mean new jobs and productivity boom. It could also eventually increase the total annual value of goods and services produced globally by 7%. Generative AI able to create content indistinguishable for Indistinguishable from human work is a major advancement, the report says. Uh, employment prospects, the government is keen to promote investment in AI in the UK, which it says will ultimately drive productivity across the economy and has tried to reassure the public about its impact. We want to make sure that AI is complementing the way we work in the UK, not disrupting it, making our jobs better rather than taking them, oh, them away. Technology Secretary Michelle Donnellan told The Sun, the report notes that AI's impact will vary across different sectors. 46% of tasks in administrative and 44% in legal professions would be automated only by 6% in construction and 4% in maintenance, it says. BBC News has previously reported some artists' concerns AI image generators could harm their employment prospects. Uh, so there's lower wages. The only thing I am sure of that uh, that there's no way of knowing how many jobs will be replaced by generative AI. Carl Benedict uh, Frey, future of the work uh, director at Oxford Martin School, Oxford University, told BBC News. What ChatGBT does, for example, is allow more people with average writing skills to produce essays and articles. Journalists will therefore face more competition, which could drive down wages unless we see a very significant increase in the demand of such work. Consider the introduction of GPS technology in platforms like Uber. Suddenly knowing all the streets in London has ha had much less value. And so incumbent drivers experience large wage cuts in response of around 10% according to our research. The result was lower wages, not fewer drivers. But over the next few years, generative AI is likely to have similar effects on a broader set of creative tasks. Um, pinch of salt, uh, whatever this means. According to research cited in the report, 60% of workers are in occupations they did not, that did not exist in 1940. Other research suggests technological change since the 1980s has displaced workers faster than it has created jobs. If generative AI is like previous information technology advances, the report concludes it could reproduce employment in the in in the near term. Uh, a long-term impact of AI, however, was a highly uncertain. Uh, chief executive of the Resolution Foundation think tank Thorsten Bell told BBC News, "So all firm predictions could be taken with a large, uh, very large pinch of salt. We do not know how the technology will evolve or how firms will integrate uh, it into how they work," he said. Uh, that's not to say that AI won't disrupt the way we work, but uh, we should focus on to uh, focus too on the potential living standards gains and higher uh, productivity work and cheaper to run services as well as the risk of falling behind if other firms and economics better adapt to technological change. I mean, all you have to do is have like something like ChatGPT be able to like talk, and so like someone like uh, rolling it up into how it functions and how it does things um, in like job replacement is um, not necessarily job replacement, but job functionality that improves job uh, efficiency and accuracy. So the worker who is, for example, has a headset on, uh, utilizing a Boston Dynamics robot in the future, walking around some metaverse uh, um, plant, um, manufacturing um, you know, floor in, in some business that's manufacturing something, and the robot is actually in a real one while the person is in a metaverse one that's fine-tuned to the real one, and doing operations as such as calibration uh, through powerful you know, servers that we we're just talking about here, or metaverse servers uh, that you know, give further uh, productivity and, and macroeconomical uh, um, costs to uh, electric companies for production, and you know, but then uh, nullifies jobs down uh, with uh, robotic equipments and actually can give jobs to people uh, you know, maintaining the robotic equipments and cuts back on physical um, dangers on the workforce, on the floor, and things like that. Uh, so the person also is, you know, able to ask AI during the work, you know, session or, or you know, uh, ch like a G GPT or something like that model uh, for deep machine learning and, and advancements. And that is saying, you know, like what calibration can I use? And here's the mathematics schematics to, you know, enter this, um, you know, mathematic together and check it. And the person checks it also because that's their job, you know, as well. But they come out with an outcome. But ultimately, like it helps them proficiency wise, like think and, and, and act, you know, in a more proficient manner and a faster work manner through AI. In such an example that I gave in theory. 
All right, Fox News, and one last um, for tech. I oh, know, sorry, finance, and then just global news piece, and we're out for the day till tomorrow. Elon Musk, Apple co-founder, other tech experts call for pause on giant AI experiments in a dangerous race. This is from Chris, uh, Chris Pandolfo from Fox News. Elon Musk, uh, Steve Wozniak, and a host of other tech leaders and artificial intelligence experts are urging AI labs to pause development of powerful new AI systems in an open letter citing potential risks to society. The letter asks AI developers to immediately pause for at least six months the training of AI systems more powerful than GPT-4. It was issued by Future of Life Institute and signed by more than a thousand people, including Musk, who argued that safety protocols need to be developed by independent overseers to guide the future of AI systems. GPT-4 is the latest deep learning model from OpenAI, which exhibits human level performance on various professional and academic book uh, benchmarks, according to the lab. Uh, powerful AI systems could be developed by uh, only uh, once. We are confident in their effects and will be uh, positive and their risk will be manageable, the letter said. The letter warns that at this stage, no one can understand, predict, or uh, reliably control the powerful new tools developed in AI labs. The undersigned tech experts cite the risk of propaganda and lies spread through AI-generated articles that look real, and even possibly that AI programs can outperform workers and make jobs obsolete. Um, AI labs independent experts uh, should use this pause uh, to jointly develop and implement a set of shared protocols for advanced AI and development that are rigorously audited and overseen by independent outside experts. The letter states, um, this, uh, sig signatories, which include Stability AI CEO Ernad Mostock, Mostock, I don't know, researchers of Alphabet, own DeepMind, as well as AI heavyweights Yoshua Bengio. Stuart Russell emphasized that AI development in general should not be paused, writing that their letter is calling for merely a stepping back from the dangerous race of ever larger, unpredictable black box models with emerging capabilities. Um, Musk, whose electric car company Tesla uses AI for its autopilot system, has previously raised concerns about the rapid development of AI. Uh, notably absent from this uh, letter's signatories was Sam Altman, CEO of uh, OpenAI. So, I mean, you know, this is kind of like a a little short there about, you know, a pause on this new AI model. Let's go right into the gold piece of news overview and close the stream. NPR, the morning news brief from the morning news. It's from March 29th today uh, by Michael Martin and A. Martinez. Closing out the stream. Watching Tech and Finance, Nashville holds a vigil for school shooting victims. Ex-Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz to testify before Senate panel over unionization, and Disney will lay off 7,000 employees in a cost-saving deal. You can listen there on the playbacks. Uh, more is business. Uh, union showdown, Starbucks. Howard Schultz faces Bernie Sanders in the Senate for something. Uh, in health, FDA has approved the overdose, reversing drug Narcan for over-the-counter sales. Uh, national a barge-carrying methanol. Barge carrying methanol broke free in the Ohio River. Really? A barge carrying methanol broke free in the Ohio River. <laughs> um, I don't know if that means it's spilled. Broke free. Barge carrying methanol. Need help for loved ones with severe mental health illness? California has a plan. Seattle and justice officials seek to end. Uh, the most oversight of city's police in national news, more national U.S. news, and Wisconsin school bands Miley Cyrus, Dolly Parton duet from class concert. Uh, national news there, uh, popular on NPR and education. A principal is fired, invited to Italy after students are shown Michelangelo's David. Um, weather, at least 25 are dead in a rare, long-lasting tornado tore through Mississippi. Pay up kid on uh, health and ERs error sends a four year old to collections but in politics. Vice President Harris wiped out tear wiped away tears as she toured Ghana's Cape Coast slave castle. National uh, three children and three adults are dead in a shooting in Christian school in Nashville. Um, and media fire fired Fox News uh, producer says she'd testify against the network in one point six billion dollar suit. 
in the NPR editor picks uh, global news a new flu is spilling over from cows to people in the US. How worried should we be? Another storm is expected to bring more snow and flooding to California and in the weather uh, world visitors flock to see Michelangelo's David sculpture after school uproar in Florida and Jeanette Walls hang the moon transport readers to prohibition and theater as Sweeney Todd turns returns to Broadway for Sweeney's dish about the difficult role in TV reviews, the Big Door Prize asks, how would you live if you knew your life's potential? Um, at least for this right here in global uh, health, a new flu is spilling over from cows to people in the U.S. How worried should you be? Um, I, I guess, like, yeah. Um, you know, let's take a six-minute listen in there. But if it's like drinking milk and eating cheese or something, 2011 Oklahoma a bunch of sick pigs. The animals had looked like the flu, just like a person with respiratory disease. The pigs had labored breathing. At the time, was working the company, Newport Laboratories, vaccines of livestock, uh, Oklahoma. Just kind of skimming through this, uh, had immediately thought the regular flu virus, I mean, infecting the pigs, uh, virus of the lab, for decades. I want to see if it's spillover extremely rare. Uh, says evolutionary virologist Stephen Goldstein at the University of Utah. I mean, we we know this because people start to looking um, when people start looking, people find it. In fact, there's likely a whole bunch of group of animals, viruses making people sick all over, all sick all over the world that doctors know nothing about. They've been hidden. The masquerades as a regular cold, flu, or even pneumonia. Uh, for example, if you have a respiratory infection in the U.S., doctors can identify the pathogen causing the infection about 40% of the time. Um, let's see, it's everywhere they looked. In 2019, scientists in Boston University ran a simple, a small and simple experiment. They went to five dairy farms in the west and southwest and washed out the workers' noses before and after the shifts working in farms, and they looked for influenza D inside the washes. They found uh, studied only 331 workers in the course of five days, but they found quite a lot of the virus. They found two-thirds of the participants were exposed to influenza D at some point during their study period, says the environmental ep ep uh, ep ep epidemiologist. Who led the study to pub, uh, publish their findings in November, the journal of Zoonosis. I don't know. Um, influenza D is quite likely common in dairy farms in the southwest. The virus is rare on the farms when finding it at such high levels, and the chance could be highly unlikely. To me, findings such as you find influenza D, you probably will, uh, will find it. If you look for influenza D, you will find it. Um, but I'm saying like, is that just like direct cows or it could be like, you know, in the milk, in the cheese, you know, I think that's the way it would go as well, you know? So, calling more research, uh, but also ensure that the virus doesn't surprise the world as SARS COVID-2 did. Um, all right. There's at least that, uh, noting of. I think it's possible to be through milk and cheese and uh, the meat. That's all I have for the day. If you're on the YouTube side, please do subscribe, turn on the bell notifications right here to blockchain tech and finance. See you back tomorrow. Cheers. Ciao. Peace be with you. Have a great and safe day.